Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another Season 8 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today, I'll be covering Support Fiddlesticks, the Harbinger of Doom. I haven't got a brain, and soon, neither will you. Alright, so first, let's kick off this Champion Guide with Fiddlesticks' pros. So first off the top, Fiddlesticks is a champion that has a lot of annoying crowd control, he has a really long duration fear on his Q, and a really annoying silence on his E. This E ability also gives him some annoying poke damage which makes him really frustrating to fight in the lane phase. If the Fiddlesticks does take a lot of damage in the lane phase, he can simply sustain himself with his W. He's then got a very strong ultimate that's great in teamfights, he can dish out a ton of damage to multiple targets and be very, very effective. Finally, Fiddlesticks is a fairly easy to learn champion and he's extremely fun as well. He's very very strong in this meta and a very viable pick. Now even though Fiddlesticks is a really strong support pick, he still has his fair share of cons. You will be going for a very high damage build and therefore be a very squishy champion. That means positioning properly is very important because you will die quickly. You are a champion that's very weak against crowd controls because usually you won't be able to survive the full duration and you are very weak if you are behind as well. If you don't have a lot of damage and you channel an ultimate into a team, you're not going to do a whole lot. Now as I just said, this is a channeled ultimate as well, so if people do have vision of you, they can escape rather easily as well and take no damage whatsoever. Fiddlesticks is also a champion that doesn't have an escape ability, so you do have to position properly because if you get caught out, you're just going to end up dying. For my runes, I like to go for Resolve and Inspiration, grabbing Aftershock as my keystone. This is really solid on Fiddlesticks because whenever you fear an enemy with your Q ability, you will of course proc Aftershock and get some really nice additional burst damage if on top of the enemy, and of course some really solid defensives at the same time, making Fiddlesticks deceptively tanky. You could of course just pump up your damage and go for Sorcery instead and get Summon Airy because it works with your healing as well, but usually you will want to go for Aftershock because it adds a lot more to Fiddlesticks. So in that resolve side you'll first want to pick up bone plating to get a little bit of extra tankiness and then chrysalis for that 50 extra health in the early game and then additional damage when you do get 4 takedowns. Then finish it up with unflinching because you will get some really nice tenacity and slow resistance whenever you cast a summoner spell. Now in the inspiration side you'll want to go for perfect timing and cosmic insight. Perfect timing is great because you will get that free stopwatch which will of course allow you to use basically a Zonias which is great to use in your ultimate if in the middle of an enemy team. Then of course you pick up Cosmic Insight just for that extra cooldown reduction. For your summoner spells you'll first want to pick up Flash. As previously mentioned Fiddlesticks is a really squishy champion that doesn't have a built in escape ability so Flash can be used throughout the game to save your life over and over again. You always have the option of flashing forward as well and fearing an enemy for your team to easily follow up and get yourself a really easy free kill. Now as for that second summoner spell, you will usually want to pick up Ignite. This will give you some really nice additional kill pressure in the lane and of course it does apply Grievous Wounds as well which is great against things like Swain or Soraka. Against high damage champions like a Yasuo or a Tryndamere, of course you could always take Exhaust as well but usually I would recommend just taking Ignite. Now let's look at your abilities, starting with your passive, Dread. Whenever Fiddlesticks stands still or channels an ability for 1.5 seconds, he will be granted between 25 and 40% bonus movement speed that lasts 1.5 seconds. After 5 seconds of not moving, Fiddlesticks will stand completely still and become a Scarecrow, which honestly is pretty pointless. This is a fairly strong passive though, because if you do stand still, you will have that bonus movement speed to get on top of a target to fear them and follow up with the rest of your damage, but it's also great when you channel your ultimate because you will get the movement speed as well, which is great at getting on top of your targets. During the lane phase, you do have the option of standing in bushes just for short durations to get the movement speed so you can easily fear the targets and then follow up with your E. Now let's look at your Q ability, Terrify. So when activated, Fiddlesticks causes the target enemy to flee, as well as slowing them by 90%. Now this ability does have a scaling fear duration of between 1.25 and 2.25 seconds, so you do want a bunch of points in this ability because it will have a really nice duration fear on it, allowing you to get off all of your damage. Usually I do like 3 points in my E ability first for some annoying poke damage, but then I focus on maxing my Q. It's really solid in offensive situations because of course you can hold the target in place to deal your damage, but it's also great as a defensive. If an enemy is trying to get on top of you, simply fear them with this ability and run away. Next up would be your W ability, Drain. When activated, Fiddlesticks tethers himself to the target enemy and channels for up to 5 seconds. While channeling, Fiddlesticks deals magic damage each second and heals himself for a percentage of the damage done. If the target breaks the tether by moving out of range, of course Drain will end immediately. 
If the target dies before the channel ends, it will reduce the cooldown by the remaining duration. So this here is a fairly strong ability as well, because if you do get poked down in the lane phase, you can simply sustain yourself with your drain ability and get back to full health. We won't be maxing this ability because it's not as strong as our Q and our E, but it still provides you some really nice sustain for that lane phase. Of course, Fiddlesticks can also do something people refer to as drain tanking. He can go on top of the dragon and just spam his drain ability over and over again and take pretty much no damage and get his team some really easy dragons. Other than that though, you'll just be using this to sustain yourself throughout the lane phase or for just some additional damage whenever you do get on top of an enemy. Next would be our E ability, Dark Wind. When activated, Fiddlesticks will send out a crow to the target enemy that bounces to enemies up to 5 times, prioritizing targets not yet hit or affected by drain, dealing magic damage with each bounce and silencing them for 1.25 seconds once. Monsters will take 100% bonus damage. So this here is the most frustrating part of Fiddlesticks to deal with because it is some really solid damage and if you get it to bounce between two targets over and over again, it will do a ton of damage and it's really annoying harassment. It's also really solid in teamfights as well because if it bounces between multiple targets that are clumped up, it will silence all of them for a short duration and it can really have a big impact on that teamfight. Other than that though, you pretty much just want to spam this throughout the lane phase as much as you can and try to get it on enemy champions and have multiple bounces to them to deal a lot of harassment. Now finally, let's look at your ultimate, Crowstorm. When activated, Fiddlesticks will channel for 1.5 seconds and afterwards blink to the target location with a murder of crows flying wildly around him for 5 seconds dealing magic damage to nearby enemies each second. This does also have a fairly large radius as well, so in teamfights, usually you will be hitting multiple targets. This ability will tick 5 times, and if you can hit multiple targets in a teamfight, this damage will be completely devastating and can give your team a massive advantage in a teamfight. When you do get on top of enemies, of course you can hold them in place with your Q, or stop dashes with your E. You can of course jump over walls with this ability as well, so usually that is how you want to use it so you can catch the enemy off guard. For your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. I then like to focus on getting 3 points in my E ability as quickly as possible because it will give you some really annoying lane harassment and it's very hard for the enemy team to deal with in that bottom lane. At this point, the lane phase usually will be ending, so I'll start focusing on my Q ability next because it will give you a really solid fear duration and can get your team some really solid picks. Now that of course means I'll save my W ability for last, but I will take a point in it at level 4 just for some lane sustain, and of course I will be able to tank dragons as well when I do have this ability. Now I'm going to cover a couple combos, and first up is just some simple harassment while in the lane phase. First you want to fear the enemy champion, then toss out your E ability Dark Wind and start draining the target. You want to use this combo especially when there is multiple targets around that one target you are attacking to get it to jump to them multiple times. It's a really simple combo to pull off in the lane phase, and as long as you can get your E to bounce to the target multiple times, it can do some pretty damn significant damage. For the next combo, we've got your Fear Engage. To pull off this combo, all you have to do is fear the target and then start channeling your ultimate on top of that target so you will land before the fear ends. Of course, when you get there, you can always use your E ability or start draining the target with your W. Usually, you will want to use your ultimate to jump onto the target and then fear them afterwards, but this is a solid way to engage onto a single target, especially if they don't have flash or other mobility. So, for that last combo, we've got your ultimate engage. First, start by channeling your ultimate onto the enemy champion, and as soon as you get there, use your Q ability to fear them, and then follow up with your E and your W. This is your most reliable damaging combo because you will be getting your ultimate on top of the enemy champion and then holding them in place with your Q so they have to take all of the damage. Then hopefully if there is multiple targets you'll be doing a lot of damage with your E and then you'll simply be draining for extra damage and a little bit of sustain. It is your most effective all in in combo and one you'll be using throughout the whole game. During the lane phase, you'll want to try to harass the enemies as much as you can with your Dark Wind so your AD carry can farm safely and grab kills as well. So like I said, use that Dark Wind to poke the enemy champions whenever off cooldown. Try to use it so it will bounce between the two enemy laners to get off as much harassment as you can. You'll then want to use your Terrify to hold people in place to get kills or to disengage from a fight. Finally, make sure you sustain yourself with your Drain ability as well whenever you are low. Of course, since you are a support champion, warding is also extremely important, so keep your lane warded as much as possible, and if you can, get a control ward because it lasts indefinitely unless the enemies clear it out. Now, teamfighting on Fiddlesticks is mostly about trying to find a good opportunity to engage with your Crowstorm. 
A good ultimate can deal a ton of damage to an enemy team and give your team a massive lead in that fight. You'll want to use your oracle lens to sweep out wards so you can go unseen and easily engage with that ultimate. Now before the team fight actually breaks out, you want to try to poke enemies as much as possible with your dark wind. It will do a ton of damage and silence the enemy so it can be very very strong in the right situation. If possible, try to find a pick with your terrify or use it on a squishy target in the team fight to stop their damage so your team can easily get on top of them and delete them. Now let's cover some of your hard matchups and first up is Nami. Now Nami's a pretty hard matchup for you because she can simply out sustain the damage that you deal with your E. She can heal over and over again and usually deal with it fairly easily. If Nami can then land offensive bubbles on the fiddlesticks you're also going to be in a very rough situation. Like I said earlier on you are a very squishy champion and you are weak against crowd control so if she can land this bubble on you you are pretty screwed if her AD carry does follow up. For the next hard matchup here I've got Scion. Now he's going to be a hard matchup for Fiddlesticks because he has some really solid all in potential. If Scion engages onto the Fiddlesticks with his ultimate, Fiddlesticks can't even fear him and he will be able to get off a really devastating combo. You want to try to poke him down throughout the lane phase but make sure you avoid his crowd controls and do not allow him on top of you with his ultimate. For the next hard matchup we've got Sona. Sona's another champion that has some really solid sustain that even procs a shield as well which is great at absorbing the damage from your E ability. Therefore, as long as she can W properly, she will take pretty much no damage from your E ability and she does also have some annoying poke from her Q. When she's level 6, she also has a lot of all-in potential with her ultimate so make sure you avoid her as much as you can when she has her ultimate because if you get hit by the crowd control, you're pretty much dead. And last but not least, we have another healer, Soraka. She's going to be pretty annoying for you because she will be sustaining her AD carry over and over again with her W which is going to make killing them pretty damn hard. Of course she also has a really annoying Q that can help keep herself sustained while also poking the shit out of you. If that wasn't enough she also has a really annoying silence on her E ability that can also root you as well. It's great at stopping the channel from your ultimate so you have to make sure you're not seen when you try to engage on a Soraka because she can just cancel it. Alright let's finish this off with the item build which starts with a spell thief's edge, refillable potion and a warding totem. As a fiddlesticks you'll usually have enough sustain from your W ability to get away with a refillable potion and you won't have to go for the 3 health pots. Of course the spell thief's edge is the best option for your gold generating item because it does have ability power on it which of course will buff up the damage from your E. For your core items you want to go for remnant of the watchers, azonia's hourglass and a morello nomicon. The remnant of the watchers is your gold generating item that is of course upgraded that will allow you to ward around the map so it is a must buy on fiddlesticks at some point in the game. You'll then need to pick up the Zonia's Hourglass because Fiddlesticks will be jumping in the middle of team fights and of course you can activate that stasis while still getting off the damage from your ultimate, it is by far the best item you can grab on Fiddlesticks. Then of course you have the Morello Nomicon, this will buff up your damage even more with the ability power on it, it gives you a nice health pool and of course applies Grievous Wounds as well which is great against anything that does have healing like Soraka or Swain. Now next we'll look at the boot options and you have either the Sorcerer's Shoes or the Boots of Mobility. Both are really solid picks, if you're looking to get a bit more damage from the magic penetration then you will want to go for the sorcerer's shoes, but if you plan to spend a lot of time roaming and you want to get off those quick fears then you will want to go for boots of mobility instead. At some point you will want to get these in your core items, usually after your first purchase. Now let's look at the item pool and first up is the Leandri's Torment. This is a really solid pickup because it will give you some nice ability power and increase your health pool, but it also applies a burn which is great against the tankier targets on the enemy team. Now if you're looking for some extra burst damage you can always pick up a Luden's Echo. It'll add just a bit more burst damage into your combos and give you a bit higher of a kill threshold. Another really solid option is a Rylai's Crystal Scepter. This yet again will give you some nice ability power and increase your health pool but it does also apply a slow as well which can work great with your ultimate. People will struggle at moving out of it since it will have the 20% slow and kiting for your other champions will be much easier. If you then want as much ability power as possible and you need to hard carry the game, you may want to consider getting a Rabidon's death cap. To have as much ability power as possible, it is required. And then of course we've got the Void Staff. This is a really solid late game item because it gives you a ton of magic penetration which is great at getting through any targets that do have a bunch of magic resist. In the later stages of the game where you need to get through targets that do have magic resist, you will need the Void Staff. You do always have the option of going for a Shirelius as well if you do want to try to engage into the enemy team as quickly as possible and get a fear. It is a pretty solid way to engage, I don't take it too much, but in situations where I need that little extra speed boost, I will pick it up. 
But for that example full build, we of course have the Remnant of the Watchers, then you'll want to choose your boots, get the Zonia's Hourglass, Morello Namacon, Rabadon's Deathcap, and a Void Staff. You can of course pick any of those other items in the item pool to put in here instead, but this is the build I will go for if I'm trying to hard carry the game and do as much damage as possible. But that's everything I've got for Fiddle. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and visit my video description below. I have a link to all my social medias, and I do also have a Discord server, so that's one you should definitely check out. But other than that, thank you guys a ton for watching, I really do appreciate it, so take it easy, have a good day, and peace.